Hello, this is Matthew Miller with his Edenet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. I'm going to walk through uh, the BlackBerry Z10 here a little bit and uh, also talk about the apps in, uh, in BlackBerry App World and that kind of thing, just to kind of give you an introduction. So today I just, well actually just uh, about an hour ago, I returned from the BlackBerry Experience event, which was the BlackBerry 10 launch event in New York. And uh, they handed out the Z10, known in the U.S., or Z10, around the rest of the world, to all the attendees to uh, to try out and test out and things like that. So, just real quick, this is the retail box. Here's the uh, the box inside the blue sleeve. Um, inside, this little felt bed there. We actually had um, a holster case, similar to what you've seen on... Uh, blackberry devices in the past so there's the holster with the, the swivel clip on the back real heavy duty and also as you can hear the magnet supported so that magnetic functionality is still there in the in blackberry 10 uh, also came with a micro usb and mine actually had two micro usbs rather than a headset in there and then a charger and a bunch of directions and things like that so that was what was in the retail box and inside that retail box was the device itself. So this is the BlackBerry Z10. And uh, just to give you a rundown, I'll go ahead and start it up just so you can kind of see some, <coughs> excuse me, the screen there. But um, just to let you know, it's a 4.2 inch display, uh, multi-touch IPS LCD, 1280 by 768 at uh, 356 PPI. So very high resolution uh, and a nice size. You know, the iPhone 5 is a 4-inch, uh, something like the Lumia 920 is 4.5. 4.2 is a nice size. And I'll actually grab my uh, iPhone 5 here, the cradle, uh, just to kind of give you a size comparison between the two. The iPhone 5 is, uh, is smaller. The thickness is about the same. I have a case on mine. Uh, the iPhone's still a little bit uh, thinner, not as thick, and narrower, um, as you can see there. So this device, continuing on, uh, of course, BlackBerry 10 operating system, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of byte, 16 gigabytes of integrated flash. I think about 12 are usable, but it also supports uh, micro SD. And the specs we got show that it's up to 32 gig with the Q10 QWERTY one showing 64, so I'm not quite sure there. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor, eight megapixel rear camera um, with a 1080p recording, of course, and a two megapixel front facing camera with 720p, a Bluetooth 4, NFC, uh, micro HDMI, a DLNA, accelerometer, gyroscope, all that good stuff. Uh, and this device that they give us for the US users, um, with AT&T, it works with the payments through the store. However, I also, and uh, it comes up in the corner, 4G LTE with AT&T. I pop my T-Mobile SIM in there, have that in there now, and it pops up and says 4G. So this device, this particular one that they hand out, works with both AT&T and T-Mobile just fine. So let's walk around the hardware. So here's the, the displays. You can see no buttons on the front. There's no home buttons or anything else. And I'll show how some of that uh, interacts here in a little bit. Um, headset speaker up front, of course. And the glass is interesting. It's kind of old school. Um, you know, it's 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 it does have some borders similar to well, not even the iPhone. It does have a couple borders up top and bottom, and then the, the glass. Uh, and unlike pretty slick devices like the HTC, uh, like a DNA, and even the uh, Galaxy Note where the glass curves. There's no curvature here. It's a straight, flat piece of glass. It has a border around the sides. Um, kind of old school, industrial kind of feel, which is fine for a BlackBerry device, I suppose. Um, on the left side, you see there's micro USB for charging and connection, and then micro HDMI for uh, outputting to a TV or whatever. That's just a slot to open up the back. On the other side, we have volume buttons, and then the, the button in the middle there is for uh, voice activation functionality. On the top is the power button and the 3.5mm headset jack. And on the back, we have 
the 8 megapixel camera. And the back is really a nice feel. It has a kind of a almost a leathery, rubbery type of a feel to it. Feels great in your hand. And there's the BlackBerry symbol. If we pop the back cover off, I'm not sure if it'll shut off or not. You can see there's the battery. Uh, it's an 1800 milliamp hour battery. Uh, the people that have had these for a, a week or two have written that uh, battery life goes about a day. It, it's not uh, the days and days that you might be remembering of the Blackberries of old, um, but it seems to be a typical smartphone. Kind of an odd shaped, uh, and it's removable, so you can always carry extra. As you can see here, it takes the uh, micro SIM, not the nano SIM like the iPhone 5 has. And then there's the micro SD and it's hot swappable. You don't have to take the battery out. You can pop that in and out. Okay, let's put the cover back on. Okay, so we're still running here. So let me kind of walk you through some of the things um, in the operating system. There's some key things that they talked about. Now, what, also, I gotta say, uh, the Z10 is supposed to be coming on uh, Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T uh, in the March time frame is what they said. Uh, it's actually coming to the UK, I think, tomorrow or today, um, and then some other countries in February. Um, and then the Q10, I understand, the QWERTY keyboard to Sprint. I don't think they're going to get the Z10, or at least they're not talking about it. So um, they talked about Peak and BlackBerry Flow, and Flow is kind of how it all uh, works together. And then Peak is kind of like taking a peek there. You know, kind of taking a peek at what's going on over there. Uh, there's the hub I'll talk about in a second. BlackBerry World, which is their new uh, software store. And the BlackBerry keyboard. Um, now, I can't check out the BlackBerry balance because you need a Bez and I don't have that. So, let's just kind of walk through. Now, there's kind of, uh, let's see, I guess it's th three main screens, right? So, when you go up, it takes you back to the task switcher. <coughs> And there's some icons down at the bottom. You can see you can have up to uh, eight, I guess it's eight limit of apps that are, these are all running apps right now. And they're live kind of tiles that are updated. And then you can tap into them to go to those apps. Um, and then you can also slide down from the top. And this launches things like, uh, I'll move in a little bit, sorry about that. Uh, settings, rotation lock, Wi-Fi toggle, Bluetooth, alarm notifications. Now, if you do that gesture, and there's a there's there's a learning curve to this, similar to the playbook, and as you if you've seen the playbook, this looks very much like a playbook. Um, so swapping up takes me back back and back and back to that, right? So let's see if I go into um, say a calendar. Now, if I swipe down, it's different. It's context sensitive to that application. <coughs> From here, you can see it says settings, manage my calendars, and you can manage what calendars you want to show. Um, you can go into your settings, and every app has different settings and things like that. Now, say I wanted to get out of there and go back to something else. There's no home button, right? So you just simply swipe up, and then there's the other open apps. It comes back to this screen. And as you can see right there, that changes to kind of like a, a little agenda view in this, uh, in this little multitasking window. Now, if we were to slide over here, you'll see that uh, this is kind of your application launcher, I guess. And I, what I've done is what you can see. <coughs> Sorry, fighting the cold from traveling. What you can see here is you can actually just, like most other operating systems nowadays, drag and drop and create folders. You see I have a social folder, an office folder, comms, things like that. And these are some of the apps that I loaded and some that came on board. I won't walk through all of those right now. Um, just to let you know, that's kind of the organization. There's kind of the app launcher, there's the multitasker, and then we swipe over here, and this is the BlackBerry Hub. And the BlackBerry Hub is where you bring in a bunch of services, and if we slide over farther, you can see what those services might be, right? Okay, and then you can go through, and, and one thing that I found is, is kind of interesting. So here's an email. I haven't found any way to go to the next email. Swiping up, swiping down, and down here is forward, back, because there's no way to go to the next. So then you have to kind of go back, and then go to the next one, go back, go to the next one, kind of a pain in the butt. Um, email looks great, functions functions well, as you can see here. Let's see. So let me go into uh, uh, BlackBerry World real quick. I'm not a big fan of it so far, 
it has some apps, but it's supposed to be 700,000. I'd be hard pressed to find, uh, shoot, 40 or 50 that I like. It's missing quite a bit. It's missing most every uh, music app, you know, no Spotify, no Slacker, RDO, Pandora, uh, no Instagram, no Google Voice, no, no travel apps, Delta, Tripic, Kayak, Alaska. Uh, no banking apps that I can find for the big banks, Bank of America, USA, American Express. No Words with Friends or Temple Run. No Netflix or Redbox. It does have a few things, and some of them are um, actually uh, Android apps, from what I can tell. Like the, the version Bible is an Android app. It does have Angry Birds Star Wars. I purchased that. Flickster, Google Talk, Untapped, um, TuneIn Radio, Wonderlist, which doesn't even have it on Windows Phone for the new version is on here. Uh, one thing, you tap featured for at and you see just a couple apps, right? Um, up here will be some featured apps. I don't know why they show Twitter or uh, Facebook, because they're integrated into the device. It's kind of silly to even, and LinkedIn. They're all part of the services in the device. Um, you can tap on here, trending apps and games. And, and you see there's still some playback things, that, or playbook things that, that show up in here. So, as you can see, they're, the apps, I guess they're getting there, but there's a long way to go with the apps. Top paid, top paid. I, I'd like to see a, a section here, top free, because people like to see the free apps. Discovery is a little bit tough. You can tap into categories, and then you have to go through the different uh, ones. Books, books, are hundreds and hundreds of apps are books. And you can tap, come down here and sort. I don't count books as apps, but there's many, many of them that way. Uh, search is the best way I found. I, I looked at my iPhone, my Android, go in there and pop a search, try to find the app. Most of them are, not, are missing. There, there's still a lot of work to do on apps, a lot of work. Uh, the keyboard is really cool. So let me just, uh, let's see. Let's slide over. Let's go to the office. It does have uh, documents to go, you know. Rim bot documents to go, so makes sense. So I'm gonna come in here, and as we start to type, you might be able to see that little words appear above where they think I'm next going to be. So I have type I, and then the next letter would be N. If you look above the N, it has the word typing, so I simply go to N. Swipe up, it puts it in there. Now, I could see typing, and then uh, I could say the best thing ever. And it didn't do anything except for swipe up on the letters where the words are appeared. So that's a really pretty cool keyboard. And let's see, in landscape, just so you get a view of what it looks like in landscape. And this is in the uh, Docs2Go uh, document there. So that's kind of a quick little look at some of the hardware and software elements. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is some similarities to another platform that some of you might know about. So one thing that's really cool about uh, the Z10, right? So here it is off, right? It's, the screen's off, the red light will flash or whatever. So one thing that's nice is you simply can swipe up, unlock it, and get into the uh, device. There's no button pushes to get into it. <laughs> Now, if you look at this device, this is the Nokia N9 with Mego. It has a really cool, like, lock screen. And what I can do here is double tap. And there we go. And then I can swipe, and then I can swipe and unlock that one. Very similar. What you'll see here is here's notifications and a feed, different feeds. I have calendar set up and weather on one panel. I swipe, swipe over. This is my application launcher with folders. L look familiar. And then if you slide over here, this is my multitasker. Now I can also come down, tap on there, see some of those things, uh, tap up, or wait a second, I'll show that in a minute. So I can, I can swipe between the three. Now if I go into an app, say a map, if I swipe up, there's some quick launch icons there. Go back to it, and as you can see here, I can drag from the side, I can see the apps underneath where I want to switch to. And then you can also drag down. And what that does in Miko is it actually closes the app, right? So you just drag down and close it. So there's a lot of the these gestures, the multitasking, the application launcher, 
that kind of thing. The only thing that's missing here is there's no real hub, but this kind of takes care of the hub and you can customize this. So Migo was ahead of its time, it looks like, because now Rim looks uh, with the BB10 very similar to what we see in Migo. And in my opinion, it's a real shame that Nokia did not pursue Migo in line with Windows Phone. You know, I, I do like Windows Phone, but I'm a huge fan of Migo as well and just uh, would like to see more of the apps. So that's a quick look at the BlackBerry Z10. Uh, a nice solid device. I think at this point, uh, it'll it'll please the existing BlackBerry owners. Um, I'm not sure yet uh, if people are going to switch for it. Um, it's going to take a lot more in the app, work, app world because if I look at this in an iPhone and Android, there's no reason I would ever go for a BlackBerry at this point. Now, uh, we'll see what happens, and I'm going to spend more, ch more, much more time with it. I've only spent all day, um, I don't know, about eight hours plus because I'm on the airplane and all day long there in New York. So, thanks for watching.